it was tough, you know, when you have to bury six, you know, people. Go inside all six murders inside the case. It was a large scene. Uh, this didn't involve a room or a backyard. This, this involved an entire home, including the yard. The odd history of the man sentenced to death, the neighbors, the grandmother, the family, the lead investigator, the connection to a doctor's murder inside the La Mesa Street murders. Welcome back. Preston Strong has been found guilty and sentenced to the death penalty for committing one of the most horrific murders in Yuma's history. And tonight, we bring you the exclusive and in-depth coverage. News 11's Garna Mejia has been following this story and now joins us live in the studio. Garna. Thank you, Alex. In June, it will be 12 years since the community has been mourning the loss of Luis Rios, Adrian Heredia, and her four children. They were a blended family. Tonight's coverage takes us beyond the verdict. We begin with what is now known about the day of the murders. For years, detectives kept those details obscure to protect the investigation. 911, what is your emergency? Somebody hit on the street this morning. I think there was gunshot fired. Okay, how many? Um, about four or five. Okay, did you see anyone? No, and somebody was yelling, help, help, help. Uh, give, give me the vehicle. Help, help, help. 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 Our timeline basically starts around in the 12 o'clock hour sometime that day on uh, the 24th of June of 2005. Um, we know the two older boys, um, Enrique and Andreas, were home at that time and they um, had some interaction with a pool uh, service that was there to clean the pool. He says he saw and spoke with the boys briefly and left by 1224, but he forgot his pool test kit and returned about 15 minutes later. The boys had the kit and returned it to his wife. And that's the last time we know for certain that the two boys were seen alive. Police believe the murderer arrived at the home sometime thereafter. The boys were dead by 2.45 p.m. It, it's our theory based upon you know the totality of the evidence that at some point, um, Mr. Strong entered the house. He knew the children or knew, knew, knew the boys and they knew him. So it would not have been hard for him to gain access into the house. Police believe the murderer now sat waiting for the next victim to come home. The next person that we believe uh, or that we pr can pretty much show got to the house next was Adrian Heredia. I think after being in her residence a very short time, she also was confronted by Preston Strong and in a very short time she too was murdered. She starts having missed phone calls. She has family members trying to reach her by phone. This including her estranged husband, Danny Aredia, who had the two youngest children with him. And I was supposed to drop them off. I couldn't get a hold of Adrian. I didn't know what was going on. With Adrian now also dead, police believe the murderer hid her body under a pile of blankets and once again waited, this time for Luis Rios. So he leaves RC Liquor about 5.30 and arrives home at, at his residence on La Mesa, which is only a short drive away. But by 5.30, Danny Aredia had also arrived at the home to drop off the two kids. Her car was there, didn't see anything going on, didn't hear anything, it was pretty quiet. Since nobody answered, I ended up, you know, turn, you know leaving. So I got the kids in the car and uh, turned around in my truck and then and went up, you know, back down the street. And that's when I saw Luis. Uh, Luis pulled, just as I got to the end of the street, Luis was pulling in, you know, in the, onto La Mesa. Well, as soon as I saw him, then I turned around. Danny followed Luis Rios back to the house. I told him I was trying to get a hold of Adrian. You know, she wasn't answering my phone calls, you know, and he had told me too that he was trying to get a hold of her and she wasn't answering either. And, uh, and so I told him that I was supposed to leave the kids. I had planned it with Adrian to leave them there. Um, and then he basically told me, well, go ahead, you can leave them with me. So Danny kissed his kids and said goodbye. I said, I love you guys, and I'll see you, uh, you know, when I get back. And so they just basically ran into the house. This would be the last time Danny saw his kids alive. And it's, it's just really tough, you know, I think about that all the time. Um, you know, what if, what if, you know, I wish I would have stayed, you know, I wish I would have, you know, made sure, you know, you know, I just wish I would have stayed, you know, just to be with, you know, I would have did what I could. 
Police believe upon entering the home, the murderer attacked Luis Rios and the children. But this time was different. Once under his control, the murderer waited to kill them. He didn't just want to kill Luis because Luis was home and under his control at about 6 o'clock. And he kept them alive for two and a half hours. At 7.10 p.m., Inez made what police have described as a strange phone call to Luis's brother, Leo Rios, who had been calling him. It's our belief that um, Mr. Strong was having her make that phone call so that people would stop calling Luis. Police believe shortly after the call, Inez was murdered. They believe only Luis Rios and little Danny were still alive around 7.53 when Danny Aredia returned to the home to drop off some laundry. But again, no one answered the door. Danny left, but then the murderer got another unexpected visitor. Between 8 and 8.30, um, a Schwann's uh, delivery uh, gentleman was at the house trying to either deliver food or make a sale, and he was knocking on the door. I think there was a concern on Preston Strong's part that there was somebody out there that wasn't going away. And eventually he made his way, is my belief, from a master bedroom where Danny and Luis were being held and were still alive, to the front area of the house. The driver eventually left, but police believe this gave Luis a chance to escape. He was able to work bindings loose enough to where he could free himself, get up from the floor, and get outside, at least to the backyard. Uh, unfortunately, he found lock, a lock gate. He couldn't make it over a fence, and uh, immediately he was no longer alone anymore. And then witnesses and neighbors heard several gunshots. Uh, Luis died of a gunshot wound to the head, and also little Danny died as well from a gunshot wound to the head. 911, what is your emergency? Somebody on the street this morning. I think there was gunshot fired. Okay, how many? Um, about four or five. Okay, did you see anyone? No. And somebody was yelling, help, help, help. Someone's yelling, help? Yeah. Do you know if someone got shot? No, I have no idea. We're not going over there. When we return, Preston Strong and the investigation that led police to believe he was the murderer.